It was the eve of the Harvest Festival, a quaint celebration that had been a tradition in our small town for centuries. The air was filled with excitement as the townsfolk prepared for the festivities. Colorful lights adorned every corner, and the sweet aroma of freshly baked goods wafted through the chilly autumn breeze. As a curious teenager, I couldn't resist the allure of the Harvest Festival. The rumors about mysterious rituals and eerie occurrences only fueled my desire to experience the event firsthand. One day, as I strolled through the town square, an old woman approached me with a tattered envelope in her gnarled hands. Child, you seem adventurous. Take this invitation and join us at the festival tonight. But beware, for the harvest holds secrets that only the bravest may uncover, she warned her eyes glinting with an unsettling gleam. Intrigued and slightly unnerved, I accepted the invitation. Little did I know, I had just sealed my fate with a choice that would plunge me into a night of terror. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the town square transformed into a surreal dreamscape. The flickering lanterns cast long shadows that danced along the cobblestone streets. The air grew thick with an otherworldly energy as the townspeople, cloaked in hooded robes, gathered around the central bonfire. A hushed murmur echoed through the crowd as the town elder stepped forward, his eyes reflecting ancient wisdom. He spoke of an age-old tradition, a pact with forces beyond our understanding, a dance with the shadows to ensure a bountiful harvest for the year ahead. As the bonfire roared to life, the eerie glow painted the faces of the gathered villagers in shades of orange and red, a hypnotic dance that seemed to beckon the spirits of the night. During the swirling shadows, a haunting melody emerged from the depths of the night. A mysterious figure clad in a tattered cloak approached with a violin in hand. The music, both enchanting and unsettling, seemed to weave a spell over the gathering. As the notes resonated through the air, a fog enveloped the town square obscuring the faces of the hooded figures. It was then that I noticed the townspeople's eyes, gleaming with an unnatural light. Fear clawed at my insides, but I couldn't tear my gaze away from the hypnotic dance unfolding before me. The townspeople, now entranced by the melody, began a slow, synchronized dance. Their movements were graceful yet filled with an otherworldly energy, as if they were vessels channeling the spirits of the harvest. The bonfire's flames flickered wildly, casting grotesque shadows on the buildings that seemed to come alive. I hesitated at the fringes of the crowd, torn between the desire to flee and the curiosity that gripped me. The once joyous festival had transformed into a macabre spectacle, and a growing sense of dread settled over me like a shroud. As the dance reached its crescendo, the hooded figures began to remove their masks. To my horror, I saw faces contorted with anguish, eyes vacant yet brimming with an otherworldly knowledge. It was as if the festival had peeled away their humanity, leaving behind hollow shells driven by a dark force. The music intensified, echoing through the night like a limit for lost souls. The shadows, now animated and malevolent, seemed to close in on me. I stumbled backward, my heart pounding in my chest, realizing that I was an unwitting spectator in a ritual that transcended the boundaries of the living and the dead. In a surge of panic, I broke free from the crowd and sprinted through the narrow streets, the echoes of the haunting melody fading behind me. The once familiar town now felt like a labyrinth of shadows, each corner hiding a potential threat. My breath hitched as I struggled to make sense of the nightmarish scene I had just witnessed. As I reached the outskirts of the town, I glanced back to see the bonfire's glow diminishing in the distance. The festival had taken a dark turn, and the ominous presence lingered in the air. I knew I had to escape the clutches of the harvest before it consumed me entirely. Days passed, and the town returned to its normalcy, as if the festival had been a mere illusion. The townspeople, once again making their everyday faces, went about their lives. Yet. I couldn't shake the feeling that something lingered in the shadows, waiting to reveal itself when the next Harvest Festival arrived. The memories of that fateful night haunted my dreams, the haunting melody echoing in the recesses of my mind. I questioned my sanity, wondering if the festival had been a macabre hallucination. But the tattered invitation, 
Now a grim reminder sat on my nightstand, a testament to the night I had danced with the shadows. As the next harvest festival approached, a dark cloud settled over the town, casting a foreboding atmosphere. The townspeople, seemingly oblivious to the horrors that transpired the previous year, eagerly prepared for the celebration. I, however, couldn't shake the lingering sense of dread. The festival's invitation, now worn and weathered, seemed to beckon me once more. Would I succumb to the dance of shadows, or would I resist the pull of a malevolent force that sought to claim my soul? As the night descended, the town square once again came alive with flickering lanterns and the whispers of a ritual older than time itself. The bonfire roared to life, casting long shadows that danced along the cobblestone streets. The haunting melody echoed in the air, and the harvest festival began anew, ready to ensnare those who dared to unravel its secrets. Hi, my name is Oliver. The crisp autumn air carried the scent of fallen leaves as we embarked on our annual pilgrimage to the remote village of Hawkshed. The Harvest Festival was a tradition among our group of friends, a weekend of laughter, bonfires, and revelry. Little did we know that the festivities would take a chilling turn, plunging us into a nightmarish ordeal that would forever haunt our memories. As we arrived in Hawkshed, the quaint village seemed to be suspended in time. The narrow streets were adorned with rustic decorations, and the flickering lanterns cast eerie shadows on the cobblestone pathways. The air buzzed with excitement as locals prepared for the night's festivities, but there was an underlying unease that whispered through the chilling winds. Our group comprised of lifelong friends, Emma, James, Madonna, and me, settled into the rustic inn we had booked for the weekend. The innkeeper, an elderly woman with piercing gray eyes, welcomed us with a cryptic. Ignoring the unease, we eagerly donned our costumes and joined the jubilant crowd converging in the village square. The festival began innocently enough. Locals donned elaborate costumes, the aroma of spiced cider wafted through the air, and the sound of fiddles echoed through the night. We danced around the bonfire, our laughter blending with the haunting melodies. The atmosphere was electrifying, yet a subtle sense of foreboding lingered like a phantom in the shadows. As the night progressed, we encountered a mysterious figure named Rose. Dressed in tattered rags, her face obscured by a hood, she seemed to materialize out of thin air. Rose spoke in cryptic riddles, her words leaving an indelible mark on our minds. Beware of the crimson moon, she whispered, her eyes glinting with an otherworldly knowledge that chilled our hearts. Brushing off the encounter as local folklore, we delved deeper into the festivities. The square transformed into a labyrinth of twisted alleys adorned with grotesque sculptures and flickering lanterns. The revelry took an unsettling turn as we stumbled upon a macabre procession. Villagers clad in crimson robes, their faces obscured by grotesque masks. Unnerved, we hesitated but were quickly engulfed by the crowd, swept away into the heart of the ritualistic spectacle. The square, now bathed in an ominous crimson glow, revealed a ghastly sight. At its center stood an ancient oak tree, its gnarled branches adorned with effigies made of straw. The air grew thick with tension as the villagers chanted in a language unknown to us. The ritual reached its climax under the watchful gaze of the blood-red moon casting an otherworldly glow on the proceedings. A sudden realization struck us we were not mere spectators, but unwilling participants in a ritual that transcended the boundaries of our understanding. Panic set in as we tried to break free from the throng, but an unseen force held us captive, our limbs moving in tandem with the ritualistic dance. As the clock struck midnight, the air grew still, and the crimson moon reached its zenith. A guttural chant emanated from the villagers, and the effigies burst into flames, casting dancing shadows on the contorted faces of the robbed figures. The ground beneath us quivered as an otherworldly force awakened. In the heart of the ritual, Rose emerged, her eyes ablaze with an unnatural fervor. With a sweeping gesture, she unveiled a gateway to a realm beyond our comprehension. 
The air crackled with energy as the fabric of reality itself seemed to unravel, revealing the nightmarish landscape that defied all reason. As the gateway widened, a horde of spectral entities spilled forth, their ethereal forms contorting and writhing in the crimson glow. The villagers, now consumed by an otherworldly madness, welcomed the entities with open arms, their sanity slipping away like sand through fingers. During the chaos, we clung to each other, our senses assaulted by the nightmarish tableau unfolding before our eyes. Rose, her form transcending the boundaries of the mortal realm, locked eyes with us, her voice echoing through the twisted landscape. You have trespassed into the realm of the Crimson Harvest. Embrace the horror that awaits, for your fate is sealed. As the spectral entities closed in, a paralyzing fear gripped us. The world around us twisted and contorted, merging the boundaries between reality and nightmare. Our screams echoed through the abyss as we were consumed by the eldritch forces, our consciousness dissolving into the eternal tapestry of the Crimson Harvest. In the cold light of dawn, Hawkshed returned to its seemingly normal state. The village square stood silent, devoid of the nightmarish festivities that had unfolded just hours before. The innkeeper, her gray eyes now devoid of the cryptic gleam, greeted us with a warm smile as we stumbled out of the inn, disoriented and shaken. As we left Hawkshed, the memories of that fateful night lingered like a spectral shadow, haunting our every step. The Crimson Harvest, a festival that transcended the boundaries of reality, had become an indelible chapter in the chronicles of our lives, a tale of horror that would forever bind us in the shared trauma of that accursed night.